In this quick demo, I'm going to show you a really cool feature we added to OSIsoft in the beta, uh, the Pi Connector. So it's the ability to query large sets of historical data, run those through models, and then output them. In this case, I'll show off uh, the new CSV output as well. So this is kind of a conglomerate of features we've uh, added to 2.2 beta that you can you can use to execute this use case. So let's jump into it. So um, in my Pi connector, the first thing I'm going to do is go to inputs. And I already started to do this. I created a, a history point, I'm calling it. And here I'm just bringing in some uh, basic data points. If I go to current value and read these, you can see the return, but that's the current value. I, so I want the history of these, of these things going back pretty far. So I'm going to select uh, interpolate. What I've done here is I'm going to link, I don't, my Pi system hasn't been alive that long, so it doesn't have that much data. So I'm going to go back five days uh, to, to now, and I'm going to grab the data in five minute intervals. And normally if we did that, you know, it's a pretty, pretty decent chunk of data that's coming through with that. But now what I want to do is break it up. Let's assume it's hundreds of days, and this is a very expensive operation. So what I'm going to say is create an index window of one day. So when the flow runs the first time, I'm going to come through and I'm going to read, um, starting five days ago, one day of data with the three three points read in five minute chunks, and all that data is going to come back. The second time the flow runs and does the read, it's going to read uh, four days back, right? It's going to increment a day each time until it gets to the current time, and then it's going to stop. So you, you could set this up to read a large set of historical data, and then each time the flow execution uh, runs, you can read a chunk of that data at a certain resolution and run that through. And this works for all the summary types, right? Total, average, min, max, etc. So I've got this set up. Now what I want to do is model it. And I've done a little bit of work there. I'm going to call this my training model, right? My AI training model. And in here I have temperature, pressure, speed, and time. And when I look at my instance, I've what I've done is I've mapped the OSIsoft history input you know, I'm reading a day's worth of data in five-minute incre incre increments. That's around the right number, I think. Maybe it's, it should be a little higher, but there might be some bad quality data in there, so I might be missing some uh, windows. But, you know, as I expand any individual element, you can see I've got the time, which I've mapped to my time category uh, column attribute, and then I've got the values for each one of the uh, the points, and I've mapped that in. And what's well, another thing we've added to make this possible to do it on a single instance is this instance mode. So by default, this is object, which means if I ran this through a flow, I'm going to get element zero of the array to come out. So single object in, single object out. If I set this into array mode, it, it does what we call array expansion. So although I've mapped row zero, it's going to apply the same mapping to the remainder of the rows, all 279 of them, to run each row through the model and back out. So if I want to rename columns or do, you know, change this to an epoch time or whatever, it's kind of a ray in, transformation, array out. All right, so I've got that modeled up. The last thing I'm going to do is we have a new, we've had the CSV connector, the input, uh, but I'm going to point this to my file system and create an output. And this supports dynamic substitution of the payload, but I'm just going to say, hey, dump to this PI data training model uh, and do a create and leave the delimiter as the default. So this is where it gets cool. So I'm going to go pi to CSV. And what I'm going to do is pull in that instance that's going to do that array expansion, right? Because I've mapped it to that historical data coming from pi. And I'm going to output that to my new CSV output. And I'm going to turn it on. And the flow can execute once a second. I mean, it's a pretty big operation, so it's probably going to take longer than the flow to finish. But at least it'll execute pretty much as fast as we can go by leaving it at, at one second here. And I'm gonna turn it on. And what we'll do is we'll go monitor the output, which we should see pretty soon. So you see we dumped the training model. And if we open this up, it's probably still being written to at the moment. You can see our schema for our model is here, but in, in replacement of each row is the pi data. Uh, in, I think we said five minute samples, right? So if I look here, I've got my temperature, pressure, speed. And if I look at this timestamp, I could have formatted this in high byte, but you can see these should roughly be, uh, I think five minutes apart is what I said. Yeah, five minutes apart, right? Starting here and then going all the way down to the current, the most recent piece of data that was in there. And this might still be being written to, uh, looks like it is because this is the 17th. So. 
it's you know it's right into that file as we go and then when high byte uh, when we reach the end which is you know we've reached the end of indexing the current time we'll start to see log messages um no more data for the interval right so pi will respond and unable to generate the instance we need to clean up these errors a little bit because this is this isn't really an error state it's more of a warning state like hey you finished you finished your execution but you can see um let's go back in how we just took a bunch of historical data from pi modeled it right pretty easily and then we just pumped it out to csv to push into our training data set and what's really cool about this uh yeah i might not have any more recent data from uh, the 17th on this Pi system. But um, what's really cool, right, about this feature is I can use this training model for also my live data. So I could have a flow here that's like, you know, Pi to CSV, bring in my, my legacy data, transform it to train my model, and then I've got a live flow that's going to pull data through that same model but the current values and push that out to a real-time system to not do the training but to do the live monitoring um, to trigger, you know, monitor an AI event or some anomaly. So pretty cool feature. It's in the beta. Give it a shot. Uh, give us some feedback, uh, but hopefully uh, pretty useful.